Hey, Brandon, how are you? I'm all right, yourself? Uh, very good, very good, man. So um, just before we kind of get into the next fight, um, the last fight against Usman, I mean, uh, how did it feel to, to kind of prove everyone wrong? He was getting a bit of, you know, publicity before it being Usman's younger brother. How did that feel for you personally? Um, it was fine. Like, I knew he was, you know, coming out of a big camp. So, um, you know, luckily when you, you know, bigger camps like that, you can kind of expect certain things. Um, you know, there wasn't a whole bunch that I could uh, – or my team could look up as far as his fights. There, he only had a couple of them um, that was posted online for us, obviously to get tape and you know do our research like how you're supposed to. Um, but other than that, I felt fine. Like uh, you know, he was uh, an up and coming name. Good opportunity for me to go out and show that uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm the guy that's supposed to be competing here on this stage. So okay, thank you. And just to follow up on that, in terms of this weekend now, um, both of you guys, you know, uh, you love a finish. Um, do you have anything in uh, in store for us? Do you see it going the distance, or what's your thoughts on the fight? Uh, my goal is always to finish the fight, finish the fight as soon as I can. Um, but Dennis is a veteran of the of the sport. Uh, you know, he fought in the 2019. He lost to the champ um, right at the end, uh, and I know he's a he's a good tactician too. He's he, you know he's going to try to pick his shots. He's going to try to throw a lot of punches and put me in a bad position. Uh, my job is to go out there and you know implement my game plan to the best of my ability and come out on top. So thank you very much, Brandon. Best of luck on Taurus Day, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Suki, are you with us? All right, welcome back, Max. Hey, Brandon, this is Max Gowen from the Going Live podcast. Just first and foremost, want to thank you for your service. Uh, but secondly, just want to ask you, you originally scheduled a fight for Bricio. Um, obviously a big threat on the ground. Did you have to make any major changes to prepare for this new camp? Or new opponent, excuse me? Uh, the notification was within the week of I found out who I was fighting. Um, so a little modification, but not a whole bunch. Um, only because like when we found out literally within the end of the week, I found out it was changing. So, you know, we already, we only were about a week into training when I found out Fabricio wasn't competing. So not a whole bunch of different strategy changes. Uh, we were just kind of ramping up and, you know, not really fine tuning anything just of yet. So it was not a, not a huge adjustment. Thanks so much and good luck on Friday. Thank you. Matt? Hey, Brandon, Matt Perto with the Beautiful Violence Show. Uh, first off, you fought a phenomenal fight last time out. It was hands down most entertaining fight in the entire card. And on top of that, you look like you just enjoyed yourself out there. Could you touch upon what fighting means to you at this stage of your life and your career? Oh, absolutely. I definitely had a good time. It was good to be back into, you know, the octagon or the cage, uh, get out there and compete against, against a bunch of these, you know, high caliber um, heavyweights. Um, yeah. Where I'm at in my career, this is just a, you know, a big opportunity. Uh, proves that all the hard work and training that we put in, me and my camp, me and my team, um, has paid off. And luckily, Ray and his team has noticed and gave me the opportunity, along with my management team, Sucker Punch and Brian and his team, um, you know, putting me on this platform to give me the opportunity to showcase my skill set. So I'm just grateful, really. Thanks for the response. Hopefully we get an NFT of you at some point. Not a problem. Nicholas. Brandon, Nico Suarez here. Um, you know, your time in the Army always gets brought up because it's a big part of your career. But how did they help you kind of adapt and overcome the instability that comes with MMA with, you know, last minute changes in opponents and all the craziness that can happen in MMA? Uh, definitely, I lean on my training in the military. And when I go into a fight, you know, um, the consistency, the uh, the repetition, the drilling, uh, all that stuff comes with, you know, being a soldier on a day-to-day, -day, building a routine, following up, having different, you know, um, strategies, different courses of actions, um, and being, uh, having the ability to adapt is a big one. Uh, we, we talk about that a lot only because, you know, Mike Tyson said it the best, everybody's got a plan to get punched in the face. So you got to have the ability to change your plan um, when things aren't going your way and, you know, just kind of overcome the hard part of fighting, which is 
when you're not winning the entire fight. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tanai. Hey, Brandon, this is Tanai from MMA Island. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. This is obviously your second bubble experience with the PFL. How has it been and how has it affected your preparations for fights? Um, not a, like the first time was a little different, obviously a little longer quarantine, uh, a little longer in the bubble, but overall it's been good. I, I brought, I'm, uh, you know, for them to allow as many people as they do into the bubble, as far as your team, for you to be able to train, um, effectively, uh, is always good. So I brought two of my main guys, you know, you know, more would always be better as far as training partners, but you know, working on specificity is always good. And that's, that's always the goal. So, um, they run a professional show, you know what I mean? There isn't anything that we don't need or, you know, uh, that we can ask for that they aren't willing to, to accommodate. And we're, again, just grateful for the opportunity that the PFL has given us. And, you know, taking the risk mitigation into effect with COVID um, is huge. You know, I deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis in the military. So that the fact that the PFL is thinking, you know, the big picture and the safety of the fighters just shows how professional of an organization they are. Thank you, Brandon. Good luck on Friday. Thank you. Tariq? Hey, Brandon. This is Tariq from the Havoc Hour. So, you know, the PFL is all about stories you know, with their season format and everything like that. Obviously, we talked about in the last fight, the story was more about Usman you know, being the big name, and you were kind of the other guy in the equation. But now you're number third in the rankings, and you're essentially just fighting to maintain your standings and get into the playoffs. Talk to me about how it feels now to kind of have that favorable position going into this week. Um, for us, it doesn't really change. You know, the end goal is always being the champ. Um, so we take each fight one at a time. Um, the guy they put in front of me is the guy who we trained for. Uh, and then if there's changes to that, then we adjust. Um, being third in the ranking is great because, you know, don't have to worry about the, as much pressure of trying to, you know, get those early points, uh, which is super interesting as far as, you know, the MMA game. Normally, you're not worried about a point scale. Um, but with a season and you know, you know, you have a, a few fights ahead of you. It's not like a normal um, MMA environment where you're fighting, you know, from contract to contract. Uh, this one gives you the opportunity to know that you're going to fight a few times, showcase your skills, whether you have a good day or a bad day, and, and continue to move on based on how not just you, but your opponents um, perform. So, Thanks a lot, man. Good luck this week. Thank you very much. No one. Hey there, Brandon. Appreciate you making some time. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I was just curious because with the last two fights there, you had a pretty pronounced gap between the fights, almost three and a half years. Obviously didn't reflect in the fluidity of the performance, but I'm more so just wondering how you're feeling heading into this one with just a much more quicker, succinct kind of turnaround. Uh, I feel really good, actually. Um, normally in between fights, you know, I kind of put on more weight than I probably should. Um, but that goes with, you know, living life, I guess. Uh, and so having a quick turnaround kept me very routine, kept me, you know, um, disciplined to what we're, we're training for and, uh, just more focused and more comfortable just because, you know, I kind of knew stepping in back into the bubble, what, what the, the, I guess this, uh, the surrounding area was going to be like, so. Thanks for the insights, man. Appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Alex, Cage Press. Hey, Brandon. This is Alex from Cage Side Press. Um, so you have a 100% finish rate, and your opponent has only lost via knockout or submission. Um, is your plan to finish your opponent? Yeah, my, my plan is always to try to finish my opponent. Um, how I implement that, you know, throughout the fight um, goes on how he adjusts because, you know, it's a chess match uh, from second to second. A lot of times people think you're going to go out there and, you know, your game plan is to knock him out. Well, you know, perfect world, absolutely. But in a realistic world, you got to have different strategies and, and be able to adjust from how your opponent's adjusting to you. So on a move-by-move -move basis, you know, you go out there, you put your best foot forward, and, you know, you try to, one, put on a show, but also finish the fight every time. So, Awesome, man. Good luck. Thank you. Um, this is Ronald E. Smith from Getting Real. My question is, just just uh, dur during that time, kind of follow up um, when you talked about how the, you had a gap break through your through that uh, three years of your career, 
and uh, including the pandemic, what had kept what kept you motivated to keep pushing whenever the fight world opened up again for yourself? Uh, well, you know, my job in the army right now is a uh, is a hand to hand instructor for the army for the combatants program. So you know, we, we're we're ingrained on a day to day basis to to be out there training, to be out there training soldiers, to to master our skill set. Um, so it's not like I'm I'm removed from like going to the gym or you know going out and, and training with a dude. That's that's an everyday thing for us. Uh, even with the pandemic, uh, we did take a like a short halt as far as instruction. Uh, but overall, um, you know, we do this. This this is our job uh, every single day. So. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brandon. Appreciate the time today. Thank you, guys. You guys have a good day.